I was too thick. Uh, I was is looking. Scott is Scott not coming? Is Scott's not coming. He just sent notes. Okay, shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's I at work have... now. Damn, I I looked at them, but I didn't like really take them in because I thought he was coming. Oh no 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 no! Sorry, I guess I didn't make that quite clear. Um, <laughs> nah. This is um, like the la- I think last time that you had him. There's been a few times when somebody showed up. They just showed up. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's how it rolls. I mean, like, especially near the end of the Sci-Fi Sanctuary guest. A lot of times Luke was like, okay, we're doing this movie with a guest. And sometimes I'd, I'd have no idea who it was. And then I'd, like, have to talk to them for 10 minutes, not having no clue who I'm talking to. That's That was fun. Uh, I'm totally fine with that. But no, I, mean, I, it was, I understand it was... a lot of people fucking do not like that at all. <laughs> no, I mean, it's fine. I just, it's kind of funny, right? Like, even if you... Like, I don't know, brought an ex-girlfriend on. I would be like, whatever, sure. Well, it looks like I'm going to do that, so. <laughs> what, really? Um, yeah, because Sarah requested if you... You got ever... one of my ex-girlfriends? No, one of mine. Oh, no, Sarah... your ex-girlfriends. Sarah requested... No, no, I don't if... care about your ex-girlfriends. All right, okay. Because should have... <laughs> Why would that bother me? <laughs> she she said if I don't know, because yeah, you, you guys are friends anyway, so... Or were. Yeah, um, we but... are friends. I'd be <clears> like, hey, what's up? I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> it wouldn't be like, oh... Um... No, no, I, I know. Anyway, she said, if you ever do Goodwill Hunting, uh, send me a message. I'm like, oh, shit, we're actually going to do Goodwill Hunting. So Nice. I was looking it's at... time to... There are what, what, 44 uh, movies. Park or something? There are 44 movies that have the same rating as some of the higher rated ones on the list. I wonder... What? If... Yeah, so they... the list is bullshit, basically? No, the list is not bullshit. It's just like... um. Like, you know, 8.2 inhabits a space from number um, 95, so close to the bottom, right? To uh, 95 to, geez, 40, 144. So technically 8.3 is where it really gets rolling. But I was like, shit, some of these movies are, I mean, I guess that's what we go back and if we, you know, one day finish the list, we go back and get these. But yeah. The Apartment, Amelie, Double Indemnity, Clockwork Orange, Full Metal Jacket, Scarface, Hamilton, which I never saw. Uh, Heat. Uh, yeah, um, I've just been talking about to my mom about how I haven't seen Hamilton. I'm just like taxi avoiding driver, it forever, LA basically. To... I mean, yeah, I mean, it's. I, I think the the plan that is in order is the correct way to proceed. I was just like, because it's only five movies that are kind of like, because uh, huh. what is it, Citizen Kane? Weirdly enough. Lawrence Arabia, M North by Northwest, Ikiru, and Vertigo are all on the list as 8.2s on our list, right? Uh-huh. So there's like 44 other movies that theoretically could have those last five spots. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to go with it as is. So wait, who I, made the list? Did some person It's, it's going list? by... Because I thought it was a mathematical list. It is. It's by IMDB rating, but maybe there's like more decimal oh. points that I don't see, right? Because it just says like 9.2, 9.0. But it could be like yeah. yeah I thought it was like the top, like the top rated, meaning that it's everything from mathematically from nine point nine to nine point two or something like that, right? That, that, that may be. I don't case. understand how it could be the top one hundred if they're excluding stuff that's mathematically the same as some of the movies <laughs> on the list. Well, maybe that's not I'm, a top. That's not a top. That's just a selection of. Maybe I'm you know not I mean? seeing. Maybe I'm not seeing the um the further decimal points, right? So maybe like. Because the order is slightly different. 100 is now Vertigo, 99 is Akira, 98 is North by Northwest, 97 is M. So the order is slightly different, even though the movies are all the same. I'm getting a lot of, like, your sped up voice. Oh. Am I coming through normally at all? You are Do coming I, through you, fine. You get a lot of me going, so nah, I'm nah, a lot of that from you. Nah, it, so it might be. That huh? seems to be a thing where, like, I get that during recording, and then I hear myself do that when I listen to the podcasts, the, the internet stuff. Okay. I haven't noticed you um, sounding sped up so much, so. I have, yeah, I have no idea how Zoom, like, handles that shit. Also, sometimes but, you just start talking fast, and it seems like that's what's yeah, happening, but it's not. You just you just start talking fast. I know, Well, no, I mean, that. I'm saying that's... I think that's what you get that from me and I get that from you where mm. it's like, I never hear you doing that on the recordings, but I do that on the record. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I'm I don't hearing hear, that. I don't think I hear much of that from you on the recordings. Am I wrong? 
I don't know. I don't know what you hear. <laughs> like, I I'm, talk- what I'm talking about is like. Uh, I mean, if we want to get yeah. super professional, you start making local recordings and putting them together. But I don't really want to do that because I mean, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I'm I mean, fine if we had like doing that, but... I mean, if we had like paid sponsors and you know, if you had a tech guy, sure. But you know, we'll see if we have like a million listeners in like the next month. Yeah. Then, then, but then you hire someone to do that shit, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I mean, I just feel I like I'm, I'm the person who would hu- get hired to do that. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, cool. If you ever listen to the um, the the Patreon mission logs, you know they're making notes for their editor. You know, yeah, they're they're clearly their stuff is clearly very professionally edited. Right. The way that like a lot of the way that all their main episodes end with someone making a point and then it goes into the to the to the plugs. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, wow, I, no. I I have to ask. I assume that one of them kind of like points in the other one goes when it's time for that. But um, I thought it was a cut. But who fucking knows? Oh no no they they do seem to time it. But now I don't watch the video, so I just assume they're you know making a winking point. But I don't know that. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <they> put... <laughs> depends. Mission I mean, I longer. I, yeah. I guess I could ask them. So. Um... <laughs> Um, I mean, we could do that if we wanted to, I guess, but... But we don't have a blurb like that for the end. We just say weird shit no. at the end. <laughs> I, th- I, think that, I think we do okay with the format of people rambling and saying yeah, yeah. crazy shit. Well, it's, it, there, there's a... See, that's the thing. Like, when we, when he started and did the... Tried to do the Firefly one, Luke was like, oh, we're just going to talk about it, right? And it was, like, yeah. kind of an unfocused ramble. And, I, and, you know, I wasn't used to podcasting yet either, so I, would, I didn't yeah. sound interesting. I don't know if you ever heard any of those. I, there's only like one I don't of think so. I mean, don't where bother. are those? I think, um, no, I think you guys are just good at filling space, which is like I think that's half the the problem with podcast or half the the difficulty of podcasts is filling space without it being like annoying or boring. <laughs> right, like, right. There's a lot of them where that turns into the joke where they're like. Hmm. Yeah, like they start doing a bit where they're just filling space by making noises or whatever, and it's like that sucks. Right, right. Because um, like uh, actually, we're doing a an interview for the Occult Disney podcast at the end of the month. So I went and checked out their podcast. I was like, you know, three or four years ago, I probably would have listened to this podcast, but now it sounds like kind of dry and boring, right? Because they're talking about um, NDEs and mystical shit, and but it's you know they aren't funny. I'm from the <laughs> other end where I hated all podcasts until like. 2017 was the first time I listened to a podcast regularly. It still oh, haven't been that many that I like. That's about the time I started listening. So yeah. Um, well, but... it's like I tried though. I tried to listen to podcasts and I could not. Oh, I didn't. Uh, um, Quest, pretty much Quest Love's podcast and like last podcast on the left were the first ones that I actually enjoyed at all. Okay. No. Um. What was I saying? I, I definitely recommend both of those, but like especially Quest Love's podcast for you because there's a bunch of like dudes who played on fucking recordings that I've never heard of or, or people <laughs> who wrote stuff mm. like deep cut stuff. It's kind of hard to recommend podcasts as in like a single episode. Yeah. And even then, you know, you get in your habits and anyone recommends them. They're like, fuck you. I mean, I got my shit, you know? In a, yeah. I tried to make people listen bag. to my favorite pot. My favorite podcast is this like fiction podcast. That's just like really fucked up. And it's like, so I don't listen to any body horror podcasts. stuff. That's the only one I've ever liked, but it's like basically just like a horror body horror mm. thing with a the narrative framing is like a fake mega church where they basically are just killing people. Mm. And it's like really abrasive. They're like talking like just people who've done a lot of acid and like my friends who I tried to make listen to it just absolutely hated it. They were like <laughs> yeah. really mad. Speaking of but, body horror and shit, I, I, did, I have to watch Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. So I started that last night. <laughs> Because we're doing God. that with 1977's The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh as a twofer. <laughs> <laughs> but it, here's um, the, the thing it's already fucked up. I'm like 25 minutes in. And I mean, the one thing that they really fucked up is at the beginning, it's like the Pooh and Piglet and friends after they ate Eeyore made a vow of silence that they'll never because humans talk. I'm like, no, Pooh yeah. should be making fucking slasher lines like, you know, <laughs> it's like. Oh, oh bother! Does he your... say oh bother? Yeah. He can't. No, he can't doesn't that, talk. Right? They're feral and they don't talk. Yeah. I think at the very end he says something like like you left or something. Oh, I haven't I haven't gotten there yet. But yeah, every time he kills someone, every time he kills someone, he should say something like oh bother, right? It's oh, like bother. 
you could just tell from the trailer that it's like you're gonna have nothing to talk about with that film that looks like just total just emptiness well, that's why it's tied up with the i mean the actual one is <laughs> 1977s it's like how he did aristocats aristocrats you know yeah i haven't listened to that one yet but it's interesting that like speaking of quest love that it was announced he was doing a directing a remake of it like <laughs> right when you guys dropped that episode that's funny cats or crats cats okay that makes more sense i guess he's doing like a live whatever a live action version of that means i don't like, know what who that fucking means. knows what that means yeah quest i don't know okay. but um yeah well, the, he's the... like he directed a couple of, he won an oscar apparently oh, okay <laughs> like, anyway he's on his way to egot type shit at this point the highlight of that episode is at the end where um thomas had fed um aristocrat jokes into chat gpt is it gpt what is the one that's... yeah chat gpt it, where he, he put it in, it, 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 there was nothing quite obscene and nothing actually funny, but it was still really disturbing. <laughs> 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 like describing the act is like, it's like my son shall bend over the dog and he has a dour look on his face and the dog and my son become depressed by the situation that they're standing in. <laughs> Shit. And the, and the hours pass. It's just like, <laughs> it's like not really funny. And it's just like, ah, that is funny though. Well, it's, it's funny. And like, of a co- yeah, it is. It's funny. And I mean, it's, it's not, like, you're laughing at it, not with it. Right. Yeah. I mean, definitely if I'd had, a, if I'd had a chance to make a joke and send it to you guys, which, Sorry, I didn't get a chance to make a joke and said to you guys, but it would have been just like no, that, that's fine. And to, it would have been like super. It was gonna lean super into like the man ripped out his own intestines and then <laughs> licked them, and that you know it would have been like just no. Like, we decide since we don't up. have a we don't have a lot of cursing on our podcast. I mean, it's not like clean, but we don't curse much, right? So yeah. we decided yeah. not to try and do the joke. So we were like, how would we approach it? So that was his approach: feeding lines in the chat GPT, and mine was just. Uh, I just I decided to describe the fucking and sucking Seven Eleven on air. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I was definitely like, I would, gonna. It was definitely gonna end that. with the guy stabbing himself and be like, "We call it the aristocrats." <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, but yeah, I was like, okay, well, yeah. I've been in this weird Seven Eleven recently, so I would base the joke on that because you you have to put your own <laughs> spin on it, right? So that so I was like, we just decided how would we construct it. And that's yeah. that was that I think I think both of our two methods are amusing. So uh, anyway, we sense. should do this episode because I'm you could say I'm number six cosplaying or you could just say I'm already ready to go to work. <laughs> yeah. Or it's kind All of a right. combination of the two. I just, well, I could put on a black shirt. So <laughs> how long do you have? So do, like, how got, long can we talk about this? I got an hour. This feels like it might end up being a really long episode. All right. An hour. Well, let's see. I'll keep it, that in mind. I got an hour and some change. So there's, there's okay. enough time to do this properly. Okay. Give it a five second and let's do it then. Welcome to Imprisoned in Prison on uh, the Prisoner Prison Cast. I'm your host, number one. I'm not a name. I'm a numbler. You're the, this is also number one. 69. I'm number 69. I'm number like, 357. I mean, if you get to choose your number, come on. It's 69, right? It's like a nickname. You can't choose your number. Mm. And I don't want to be bothered in the village. I don't want to have to, because it seems like the higher up your number, the more mind games you have to deal with, where if you have a lower number, you can just like hang out on the boat and play captain. Well, the good thing is, is that nobody's going to be having to do anything in the village ever again, because it. It launched a out. rocket. It fell out. And it launched out. a rocket. It fell out and fall out. No one's okay. going to be there anymore. It seems anyway, it's intact, though. Couldn't they go back if they wanted yeah, to? That's, that, was, that was a joke. It, it, it didn't make any sense. I was like, is it going to nuke itself? Is it going to blow up? Should no. they have shown the village at least like in a you know, 1960 time machine crappy effect burning thing? That would have been worthwhile. We'll get into it, but I feel like the uh, the ending itself is better than the execution of the ending okay but anyway well, uh, we're talking about fallout the last episode the final episode so far mm. of the prisoner oh well there's that 1990 episode okay With until 1990 <laughs> <laughs> i think actually there's there's actually a comic book that came out like a year ago that's supposedly can uh, canonical oh, there's one in 1988 which i've read and one 
And the one you're talking about was, I think, 2017, 2019. Sometimes I get my sevens and my nines confused. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it, I, it's ready to read on my iPad. We, I, we might talk about those. I don't know. But not today. Today's Fallout. Trivia me. Fallout. Trivia. At long last, we have learned the identity of number one. It is you, the listener. Anyway, that's all we have time for. If you'd like to catch us on other podcasts. All right. That's, mm. that's it. Uh, no. Mm. Patrick McGowan returns to write and direct. This time he does so without a pseudonym, although Kenneth Griffith, as the president or magistrate, had to improvise so much of his own dialogue that he's listed as an uncredited co-writer. In fact, it's rumored that most of everyone's dialogue in this episode is improvised. Even though McGowan put his name on the episode, he did have to go into hiding because so many confused fans of the series started hounding him at his home, demanding explanations. Unmutual! <laughs> I hope so. Or like, ah, unmutual. Ah, they're just screamed I in front of his house over and over. I, I, I. Uh, there was some dispute about whether McGowan knew he would have to come up with a series finale before he left the country to go film My Station Zebra or after filming The Girl Who Was Death. Regardless, this episode was written and filmed in about two weeks. This episode is the only Prisoner episode to feature heavily feature recorded music. Most listeners will recognize the Beatles' All You Need Is Love, an extremely rare case of a Beatles song being licensed for use in TV or film. According to George Harrison's son, Donnie, oh, D-H-A-N-I, not, not the other Donnie. Yeah, it's the Donnie uh, Harrison ukulele. I know how it works. Okay, well, maybe the listener doesn't have that ukulele. He but signed anyway. it on the back. I mean, he didn't. It's a laser cut, but it's his name. According to Donnie, Patrick McGoohan was supposed to direct the Beatles in a movie project similar to The Prisoner. The project fell through, but McGoohan was still able to convince them to let him use the song. Oh, Somehow. okay. Because I was actually, um, I was talking with, with our listener and, and friend Scott about that. And I was like, well, they recorded it for the BBC. So maybe the BBC had like certain rights to it. But I just assumed the that the BBC could use anything they wanted. Well, yeah, but <laughs> that's they, literally that's because the Beatles played "All You Need Is Love" like on their worldwide satellite broadcast for the BBC. So I was like, maybe that, since it was commissioned, they could like use it. But I guess they well, just. As Americans, we have no idea what it's like to have like nationalized television. Like, I mean, we the Beatles, have no idea yeah. what that's like. Well, I do. I have NHK, but. <laughs> Yeah, you do now, but I'm saying that we we didn't grow up with it. I yeah, true. PBS barely counts, and I'm sure you don't watch NH. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sure you don't watch NHK as much as you would have when you were a kid. If What's you on Japanese? It, like... Yeah, but you also <laughs> have like the entire internet. Yeah. Also, anyway, you have to make eight podcasts. It it, it also it probably t- didn't it well in this case it helped that the Beatles had no management by that point so. <laughs> Yeah, man, I bet their management was like number one, and they just screamed and ran around and they couldn't find the number one. And then, and then what? What? Alan Klein finally showed up to be number one, and that didn't go out the, so well. <laughs> okay. Anyway, anyway, sorry. speaking you of know. number one, the only song featured more heavily than uh, "All You Need Is Love" is "Dem Bones," also known as "Dry Bones" and "Dem Dry Bones." It's a spiritual written by James Walton Johnson and his brother Jay Roseman Johnson. In the 1920s and first recorded in 1928 here it's performed by the four lads a canadian white singing quartet who were very successful in the 50s and 60s although this recording was not released as a single that's probably for the best <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was very interesting <laughs> to find out that it was a bunch of white canadians uh for me personally anyway our other principal actors in this episode are returning from previous episodes of course we have leo mckern back as number two now former number two from free for all and our penultimate episode once upon a time kenneth griffiths is billed as the president aka the magistrate you'll remember him as number two aka professor snips from the girl who was death and finally alexis canner is number 48 who is the kid aka number eight from living in harmony who also contributed some voice lines and a cameo in the girl who was death and, of course, we have Angelo Muscat as the butler and Peter Swanwick as the supervisor rounding out the cast. As usual, none of these actors will appear on The Prisoner again. Right. Okay. So you were just reading the trivia fast in this case. I was. Okay. Because we were just talking about, like, Zoom compression. So Sometimes I feel like I didn't do a good job on the trivia and I really read it really fast so it'll be over. Oh, so people won't notice what you actually said. 
I I just don't want to think about it anymore. <laughs> You're just this episode. We're gonna do it like the micro machines. You do it like the micro machines. Machine. Micro machines. Okay. Micro machines. I'll do the summary. Um, I watched the episode again, but I intentionally did not look at any reference this time while writing the summary. So it's all from memory. If there's a okay. little mistake, that's why. I th- Good job. Yeah. You did better than I've ever done. I've never Having, done that. Here, all right. Having yelled at number two until he died during degree absolute, number six requests to be taken to see number one. The supervisor takes him on an elevator underground through a cavern of jukeboxes all playing the Beatles All You Need Is Love and into a large supervillain chamber. A judge explains that there is quite a bit of pomp and circumstance required as number six has practiced the purest form of rebellion and is no longer a number but a man. He has shown poorer forms of rebellion through number 48 who used to be number eight who just bops around singing dim bones for a while, and number two, who is resuscitated to show the hypocrisy of rebellion after working for the man for so long. They are placed into a weird stasis after their presentation. The former six is invited to make a speech, but is drowned out by the eyes of the village committee, each one representing a very specific interest. The former six is told he must lead them or leave, but first he enters the inner sanctum where he finds a rocket and then a masked figure who turns out to be a gorilla who turns out to be a crazed Patrick McGowan. Six traps this weird guy with a one on his cloak into the rocket and initiates the launch sequence. The village evacuates. Six breaks two and 48 out of stasis. And along with the butler, for some reason, the four of them shoot their way out of the village and escape on two's mind game tractor trailer from the last episode and some of this one. Turns out they are only about 30 kilometers from London. Number 48 gets dropped off on the highway to hitchhike around. Number two rejoins the House of Lords and six gets back his London flat along with a new butler and an automatic door, which seems a little ominous but he does get to rip asphalt with Carr again, regardless of if he is still a prisoner or not. Okay, that's it. <clears throat> all right. Glaringly wrong? No, not at okay. all. There's, okay. I mean, you, you missed a bunch of details of people yelling nonsense, but I don't think that those need to be That's not the thing addressed. you put into your two-minute summary. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um. You so, know what the problem with the speech was? What was the problem with it? I picked it up watching it the second time. He started every sentence with I, so they all started screaming I at him. I think if he had like said something different, maybe he, they wouldn't have started. They probably still would have. But I was thinking mm-hmm. like, because he was like, I am here. I, and then they're like, I, I, I. I'm like, what if he says, you know, we hold these truths to be self-evident, you know? He, I guess well, then they, they would just scream thing, we, 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 and then they would sound like a bunch of little pigs. I think McGoon himself is actually just saying really dry tax stuff or something because he because there wasn't an actual speech, you know, written or anything. Right. We don't yeah. really know what the guy was trying to say, which I, I guess is part of the point. <laughs> I want to th- I want to believe that he was just like yelling passive aggressive stuff about all the other people who worked on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can hear it. Passive. <laughs> uh, OK, well, it's passive aggressive if you can't hear it. Um, OK, uh, so. How do you, how do we go about this? How do you read this episode? What do you, if you had, if I had to explain, if I demanded that you explain what you think is the objective reality here, what's your read on it? Um, you and I have not been to London, but we've heard a fair amount about London. Mm-hmm. What happens now if you try and shoot a scene at the House of Parliament? Do they uh, shoot you in the head? Maybe. I don't know. But that doesn't happen. You don't get to do that. Yeah. London has CCTV all over the place. The city of London itself. You know the difference between London and the city of London. No, I don't. City of London is a special district that has the financial stuff, Buckingham Palace, all that sort of stuff. Is it um, like how it's... Washington, D.C. has like there's sort of the government buildings and there's everything else? Yes, except like it's even more legally set apart. So 
the city of London in particular, I would say Patrick McGowan was maybe kind of saying this place is going to become the village. And it kind of did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wonder if that was kind of what, I mean, there's so many ways you, you, like you said, how do we get this started? Um, of course, I wanted to bring up the, the, the Alex Cox theory that he's a rocket scientist. That's kind of a fun one. <laughs> he does know how to launch the rocket. <laughs> I mean, I, I think, um, he didn't this just is, press a button. He had to do several things to launch that rocket. <laughs> this is basically what I would call the total recall ending. Mm. Like I feel like probably what actually, if I had to guess that degree absolute worked and he's just like n lost his mind. <laughs> Maybe um, that's, this is the thing is that the number six, I feel like the number six that we've had since he woke up at the end of the last episode is a much more confident number six. And he doesn't do anything wrong here. Like there's been a bunch of times when he got kind of cocky and messed up during the series. He's he did he played all of his cards perfectly this episode, which is uncharacteristic. But now that's where again, I'm not saying I necessarily agree with the the theory. I'm just like I find it interesting because the first one or two times I watch his show, it's like, oh yeah, he's a spy, he's danger man, right? So the idea that he's something else I find fascinating. And once yeah. he's in this weird secret british space program setting he can play all the cards right because that is his proper setting well there's also like absolutely no talk of why he resigned in this episode like it's like nobody nobody cares it's sort of anymore. like a thing where yeah in your when you're uh well now they just want to accept when the job yeah but it's like i think but regardless of what objective reality is i feel like what the show is about is that you can't escape your own success mm -hmm. it's just basically not only did patrick mcguin was so good at making spy shows that he kept had to keep making spy shows and the spy show like wouldn't let him let go of him basically that's sort of what this is but it's like you could also apply that to number six is number six is so good at being number six that he can't he couldn't quit being number six even he couldn't quit being a spy even like another like group of people got him and then they tried to make him <laughs> give him a job like you know what i mean it's like he could not i mean this does have him. the full james bond spy shootout especially 60s style right <laughs> yeah that that kind of confused me i was like who are the guys in the blue suits like what they're was the, that they're the people the, that uh um, the government they're the the cronies they're the henchmen. Cronies. They're henchmen. Were they? Were those the? But they were shooting like the 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 UN guys. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The, the jury. Was shooting. I don't. I mean, it was yeah. Everyone was. I mean, our our heroes. I guess are they heroes? I don't know. The people that we are <laughs> meant to follow in this episode are basically just shooting at everybody. So <laughs> it was like everyone was shooting at everyone. It was just that was. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I know it was supposed to be confusing, and it was great. You know, it was it's like, better but... than the James Bond scene because James Bond, you know who he's shooting at, and everyone else is just shooting at him. Whereas this is more of a a a, a free for all. <laughs> yeah, it feels like a satire, but not maybe not supposed to be a satire. But that's the thing. It's it's great because it's ambiguous. Did you ever see um, the um, deleted scenes from Austin Powers? Maybe I don't. I don't remember the last time I watched deleted I, I... scenes from everything. Okay, I Anything. see why they cut the stuff because it would have made the movie too long and plotting, but it's actually maybe the funniest thing in the movie. Uh, every time Austin Powers kills a henchman, there's actually a deleted scene where it cuts to like the guy's wife getting a phone call and it's like a tearful scene where she's receiving the news <laughs> of her husband's death. <laughs> and it ha there's like four of these. And I'm like, that's the funniest <laughs> thing in the movie. I see why they cut it because that's not good for patients at all. But that's hysterical that every time Austin Powers kills a hitch, but we have to see the, the aftermath with the guy's family. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather see that than the entire fat bastard shtick or like, I think, I feel like every character he played that wasn't like Austin Powers or Dr. Evil was like way too much of a comedy record scratch. And then, well, this was the first one. So that's all he played. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not, I'm not here to, I'm not here to shit on Mike Myers. Anyway, we'll do that in a few weeks on a different podcast. True. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I love the ending, but I'm like, not 
like this isn't one of my very favorite episodes because the execution is like it's great and then it kind of like kind of like does weird i don't know it it feels like it kind of collapses <laughs> and then i'm kind of the that, opposite and, where i like um, the execution and i i i mean i don't dislike the ending but the ending is a little bit like vaporware you know yeah i i understand i mean i feel like that might be the the common like feeling on it is that people like the execution more than they like the actual ending itself but it feels like it it kind of collapses under itself and then you come away with like not a whole lot happened in this episode like there wasn't a whole lot there was a lot, big to do about number two coming back and you know they did that clever thing where they put shaving cream all over him to explain <laughs> why he's shaved which is like here slightly it was, yeah it, it, probably because he had a heart attack making the last episode and recover. <laughs> here's the here's the the, the punchline to that particular joke um when i brought up leo mckern's wiki page there's a picture from him in a movie in 1970 in which he looks exactly like he did in the earlier episodes so he oh. ended up looking like that again a year or two later <laughs> <sighs> damn it leo anyway anyway um, but but there was a that didn't really amount to any there wasn't really we didn't need to have a number two in this like i i understand that it was like he was fun judge he was, was laughing number two he could have been the number two he never said it was he was great one. i mean he's great he was he really did a great job carrying so much of this episode oh his line deliveries when, were so pompous it was great yeah but when you know when number 48 basically starts to like break down is he starts like tricking him into saying a bunch of like hippie stuff <laughs> and he's just completely goes with it like it's that was to me some of the best stuff <laughs> right so and you know McGoon himself doesn't speak much in this episode maybe no, he's that's just why... sitting watching for most of it that's probably why that's why i don't feel like and and the number one thing just it's like number six gets to watch a circus yeah the number one thing just kind of didn't go anywhere and that's like fine i don't it, it didn't it's hard for me to get it's hard for me to get that analytical about it when they didn't give us very much and also we've already seen an, another patrick McGowan at least once so we know they more can than do once? clones and or you know they can grow i mean 48 is yeah. supposed to be dead right well you and i well, didn't he was number he eight just, but he just fell off of a railing which doesn't seem no he was number but... eight then that's a different it's well, either no, no. a different guy or maybe he isn't a different guy well no i yeah i guess i i felt no, I, I noted that in my summary. What, what did I write? I wrote uh, as number eight who used to be number eight. So I guess I well, went with it. It is the same guy or a clone or something because they've cloned people before in the village. You want to know something even worse? What's that? There already was a number 48. Those people have maybe the numbers of the dead. change. The numbers There's change. a different guy. Sometimes, sometimes you're assigned <laughs> a new number. <laughs> he, was, he was a guy in Dance of the Dead. I didn't put Did in my die? trivia because. Did he dance with I, the dead by the end? I don't remember. Uh, did anybody dead, die the up for grabs. I mean, do they retire? He was the nighttime like supervisor. He was like one of the guys who, like, who number two, like, snuck up on, or number six snuck up on and took his lab coat or something. Well, he died two weeks ago, and that's why the number is up for grabs. So they gave it to the clone of number eight because someone else is number eight now. So, I mean, what if they? What if they were the same guy the whole time? I mean, see that that's the whole thing is me believing that this did all happen in number six's head explains everything because <laughs> well, that explains because, everything for anything. <laughs> but but like there's a rocket from like the girl who was death. There's a there's a, he says why to a bunch of people just like in the general. He's he's got uh, the kid from Living in Harmony is there. The guy from the girl is dead. The rocket scientist, who is also number two, is there. The other number two is there. There's like a bunch of stuff that kind of comes back. There's Curtis is there. It's Curtis. He's number one. This is your fever dream. Well, Curtis I mean, it makes one, yeah. I mean, it Rover makes sense, but come. but this thing is um, yeah, Rover died because it was, it was sad. sad. Yeah. What did I <laughs> What did I write? I wrote um. And it played this, this weird like Brazilian music while he was dying. I was like, what's going on? Oh, Rover is just festering now. Okay. Oh, and then and then they're driving on the highway throwing toilet rolls out of the trailer. That was rude. Litter bugs. I mean they're they're partying. They they got out. Yeah. 
Did they have wine on there? I guess the wine kills you though. So, and then you have to be resurrected. So, <laughs> nobody ex- that was specifically not explained. They can't explain their methods. Right, right. Well, it involves shaving cream. So, um, yes, there, there is the the butler is number one theory because true power stays quiet. That makes sense. <laughs> and he he does when the t- it changes. He just suddenly joins six, and now he's going to be six's butler. Yeah, that was that was interesting. I mean, there's a <laughs> bunch of interesting. I mean, the, there are a few little interesting touches, like when they're in London and Number Six is sort of talking to a to a cop, like sort of at the back of the screen. You can't really tell what he's specifically what he's saying or what he's oh, and doing. Oh, he starts dancing or something, and yeah, then, and then well, they have then to run off. Playing. Yeah, that was weird. So, I mean, there's a lot of weird. I mean, that's where I guess the whole fever dream thing kind of bumps in. So you, you can assume that could be his like contact that he's giving information to or something like that but through an interpretive dance he didn't do that any of the last like three or four times he's been to london yeah 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 he should have they should have had him be like a and i mean the cop cop on the street the bobby cop whatever it is it shouldn't constable constable probably no, i think constable is a higher rank i think maybe he's future constable okay, he's a future constable yeah but anyway probably doesn't know the entire dance code of the of british intelligence Mm. <laughs> you can't just Maybe. teach that to everybody i mean if everybody <laughs> knew it it's not really I mean, spy stuff anymore imagine training the police mm. anyway uh so and i also thought it was very interesting that that the ending it doesn't say the prisoner it just says prisoner right <clears throat> And it doesn't credit because they're crediting the actors. And then, yeah, he just, I mean, that, that, it's a little lame. <laughs> yeah, that music is super lame at the end. It was like, dur, 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 it's dur, like dur, when, dur, 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 it's like when Prince decided to paint slave on his cheek, which actually is cooler, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was because his, like, he couldn't get out of his $40 million Warner Brothers contract or something like that. Yeah. They're like, you because they wouldn't let him put out a year. Yeah, they were like, hey, you can't actually put out like a triple album this year and then a double album next year and then five more albums. You can now. It's all, you know, streaming, right? So, but should you? Mm, yes. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Have you have you tried? Have you tried listening to like the entire Prince Vault? Oh god, no. <laughs> it's too much. It's too no, much. I... There's a you could make like a probably at least two really good albums out of the vault stuff maybe three but it's like he was pretty smart to or somebody was pretty smart not to release just all of it <laughs> well, that's what we do now but uh anyway uh cool. back, back to to prisoner i it's, i guess it's the same sentiment i don't mean we will follow this up with a prisoner puzzle because i think we need to get a taste of magoo and not acting so yeah, we need we need as much information as we can get, but I still feel like I feel like this is basically him making commentary on that he can't get away from his the thing he does successfully, which makes a lot of sense. And, and then he just stopped doing stuff after this for the most part. I think he was just really depressed, needed a break. Because <laughs> as we've said before, after a show, he doesn't. I mean, does stuff, but not like a whole lot, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, I the biggest hit after this for him probably is Braveheart, right? Am I yep. missing something? <laughs> well, I will pull up while you're talking. Okay, that was, look uh, at it. That's what while you're talking. Why well, I have to look at my notes and where I am. You have to talk. Oh, I kept I kept calling the stasis chair the fart chair. Uh, that had some, <laughs> that had some minority report to it, right? Where they put. Um, I mean, this was all like Philip K. Dick as hell. I don't I don't know if. If McGowan was like a fan of Philip K. Dick at this point, and like well, Philip K. Dick was definitely not, I don't think he'd written his like super hardcore trippy stuff yet. I mean, he written, I know he'd written The Man in the High Castle at this point, some good stuff, but I feel like there's some feel like 1972 date where uh Philip K. Dick is like, you know, the heavens opened to me and my mind shattered, and now I you mean he got a brain tumor, yeah, and then yes. he started writing really trippy stuff. Or maybe he didn't get a maybe he didn't get a brain tumor. Maybe his brain tumor just like got big enough that it was causing. I don't, I don't know. Problems. I don't know. But I feel like the seventies is where you know Dick became the Dick we all know. 
I mean, the Valis Valis trilogy is sort of like the considered the when he really lost his mind. Uh, it's like seventy eight. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So, so this uh, my point is while this is contemporary to Philip K. Dick, it's not mm. the trippy edge that we associate with Philip, Philip, Philip with him at this time. I couldn't say his name a second time. If you say it, yeah, times, it'll appear in your mirror. Yeah, even Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep was published in 68, which is definitely too late. Yeah, well, about the same time, but yeah. So, hmm, the, okay. the point being, uh, this is a case where you don't have to be like, oh, they're just ripping off well, Bill Dick. It's like... No, I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> it, you know, it just came about, of the, I mean, it came about around the same time because a lot of the same, you could, like, it's not always a coincidence when things are similar. Sometimes it's just their things are influenced by the same things going on in society and you just say this is influenced by like the the drugs hippie drugs thing <laughs> now you could really go yeah you go really, about that far you really get out there man yeah man <laughs> them bones <laughs> with them, them bones hip, the, them hip cats singing them that that old blues stuff like them bones that's what the grateful dead yeah. was jamming at winterland <laughs> well i mean <laughs> so Patrick McGowan did a few more films here. He was in a series called Rafferty where okay. he was Dr. Rafferty. And it looks like it ran for one season. That was like mm. 10 years after this because mm. of course he was in scanners and uh, what, like a bunch of a few Columbos and then there's the Simpsons and treasure planet. Yeah, so that's kind of my point. He, he still yeah. does stuff. It's not like he became a weird recluse or, like, reti- or resigned. <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> played he, the Phantom's dad in The Phantom. Is that on our would, list of movies? No. Yes. No, I don't remember. <laughs> I think it's not bad enough to make the list. Um, speaking of our films it. and filth podcast, for anyone who has no clue what we're talking about, where we look at the best and the worst movies. The Mini Phantom, Blood. descendant of a line of African superheroes, travels to New York City. Mm. Uh, it's a five out of ten. Anyway, Billy oh no, Zane. that's why it's way too good. Billy Zane. I did see that opening night in the theater. That said, I don't remember anything about it whatsoever. So, um, I saw <laughs> the shadow, but I did not see the phantom or the spirit. I saw. I did not see the spirit. Okay, that was several years later, though, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, but you know, because uh, not the not phantom l- several, and the several years later. I was definitely down with, yeah, I want to see an old timey superhero on the big screen, which apparently most people did not say because not many people went to see those movies. But <laughs> so Rafferty is military, military surgeon Rafferty, now a civilian, brings his rigid army ways to the more casual scene at City General. Often clashing with other staff, he's a mentor to carefree Daniel Gentry while oblivious to Nurse Vera's affection for him. It sounds like Garth Bringy's Dark Place. Actually, it sounds like Aftermath. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't do so well, but it's rated seven out of ten on IMDb. So oh, okay. can't be that well, bad. We'll have to watch and find out if it's more like After Mash or um, Garth Marenghi. I mean, I'm hoping Garth Marenghi. I was just yeah, when you were reading the description, I was thinking After Mash. Do you know After Mash? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we talked about it a little bit on some other podcast. And I no think, one else, I... and no one else knew what it was except for me. And people didn't believe me, and then we had to look it up. So it was I real. Heard of it. After I Mash heard of it, real. but I didn't watch it. I didn't. Nobody watched it. That's why I, was I didn't watch that episode. much Mash, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't. It Mash was a little bit. There's sort of a thing where when shows are a little bit before your time, they just feel dated enough to. Or maybe it's just comedy. Have you seen much Mash at all? No, you've mean, seen a few. You, yeah. you know, you know Hawkeye, right? Yeah. Like, the Auto version, not the Southern version. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, like. I mean, I'm just like pulling. I haven't ideas seen out the film. Butt. That's you'd like the film, I think. Um, Probably would. But I do feel like Auto's Hawkeye is kind of on similar ground as Number Six. He's hornier for sure, um, and he does not resign because he's like a doctor, and he's like, I have to save these lives, right? I mean, otherwise, he'd probably love to resign. <laughs> he always felt kind of like the uh, was the guy from Catch Twenty Two. Oh, the Catch Twenty Two um, guy. Yeah, the Catch-22 guy. That's Yosarian? That's... Was that his yes, yes, that is right. Okay. Yosarian. Yeah, he always felt sort of like a Yosarian. I've but... read it twice, never watched the movie. I've never watched the movie either, but I love the book more the than best... I love MASH. Yeah, the best sure. The best books are, um, you know, unfilmable, right? Or at least that there's not like yeah. a good film version of them. 
Yeah, they're unfilmable or, they're, or they would be very hard to film properly. <laughs> like, I think yeah. it's a weird thing where Watchmen, like the film version of Watchmen is almost impossibly like close to the to the book, but it still isn't there. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? Like, I, it's, it feels like I, it f doesn't fly close enough to the sun. I think I'm in the minority liking Boz Lerman's uh, Gatsby, but. I don't think I saw that. I just don't like Boz Lerman. Yeah, there, you have to cross the Boz Lerman bridge to watch that. I, I did start watching Elvis, and it, well, actually, it was Tom Hanks' his weird performance that got me not watching too much of it, <laughs> more than the Lerman. <laughs> I think you want a Razzie for that. I was kind of like, maybe I'll buy into it, you know, but I was like, oh, no, this really does suck. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> I mean, I sort of considered it, but I don't really care about Elvis that much. Like, I never I, have. I probably care more about Elvis. I mean, not that much, but um, I, I am a little more down with it. Yeah, I'll do some Elvis, you know. I've been yeah. to Graceland. I, I mean, he was room. a great he was a great performer, but I just don't like, I don't really understand, like, the fandom that much. He seemed like a really, I, I don't think his story is all that interesting. I think he's just, <laughs> like, a good performer who's kind of a boring person. And they got co-opted into movies in uh, Vegas stages. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole thing, is it's, if he wasn't, if he was an interesting person, he would have done more interesting things when he could do anything he wanted to. But he like, it's like, give me a peanut butter sandwich. Uh, I'm gonna but do again, gospel that's... now. Good, I hope he talked like that. I mean, I guess that's where the Magoon story is more interesting. <laughs> except that I, the point that I think we we're getting at is his career doesn't quite fizzle out, but goes on, goes into orbit at this point, right? And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like, he yeah, he wasn't, he didn't like helm a series you know he didn't like direct i mean a bunch as, of as, stuff. as far as living your life i mean he probably that sounds like he made some good decisions but uh as far as like looking at the career you know but again that's the point of the prisoner well, right You're, you this, look at number six's career it's probably impressive but he just wants out but he also you know he was in like three spy shows right before this right i mean danger man almost like overlapped with this keep I in think mind that yeah david and danger man secret agents the same show by the way <laughs> Just to okay. make sure we're clear. Yeah, on that. I mean, <laughs> but still, that's long enough. Secret I mean, Agent is yeah. the American it, title because Americans couldn't oh, okay. understand the phrase "danger man." Well, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like just somebody like cave your kids away from. Them. Is that like jackass? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but this is like his burnout. Like this is basically his, you know, this is his smile, if not his pet sounds. Like okay. it's the smile. You know, it's like he, his Sergeant Completed. Pepper's completed smile if sergeant peppers had killed the beatles that, that would be the prisoner that's why it's like a really good metaphor for it because all you need is love doesn't really make a whole lot of sense in the context of this episode well sergeant peppers sort of did kill the beatles i mean they they went on to make more great albums but again their manager died shortly after uh you but know killed they, their desire to perform they, they in didn't, live right they didn't well it was the first thing they did not performing live anymore right ah. so um yeah you know, i mean you know great music but yeah that's definitely the point where um i mean by everyone's watching or a lot of people just watch get back where it kind of seems like mccartney's like earnestly trying to keep the band together and no one else cares much <laughs> yeah i honestly prefer pre Surgeon peppers to post Surgeon peppers pretty much uniformly mm. but i mean there there is some good stuff after that but i was more into their uh like you know from the hip stuff yeah, I'll probably take a reverse base on that, but uh, <laughs> well, yeah, most of you would. I mean, the Beach Boys. I feel like I prefer Beach Boys after Brian Wilson went insane to before. So oh, I uh, late sixties, early seventies stuff. That's great, except for those couple tracks yeah. that are vomit inducing. <laughs> I mean, it's still, I still kind of, I feel like when they're actually when the Beach Boys are actually vomit inducing, it was more interesting than the Beatles were kind of like. Uh, my, my favorite Beatles track is "You Know My Name." Look up the number, so because it kind of does it all. <laughs> but um, I mean, it's a little tongue in cheek saying that's my favorite, but it kind of is in a way, you know. So, um, but I mean, well, let's look at the prisoner. Uh, did, did do we have any particular? I mean, we'll do a little more of an overview. But uh, did did we have any horrible tracks to this or episodes? I, I feel like none of them are really stand out as being bad. Uh do not forsake me oh my darling was weird uh, and it doesn't it was on the so line well. i don't think it was bad bad but it was like unnecessary you could you <laughs> like could, they could not have taken watch that one. out yeah well, no, they could have I mean, just taken that out it would have been bring, fun. bring up 
Scott again, whose whose notes were sent to us. Um, he I because he watched Fallout, and I was like, ah, oh, you should go watch this. And he's like, oh, I still need to watch Living in Harmony. And I was like, oh, you could probably you don't really have to like right now. You, that I mean that one's good, but disposable. Yeah, you don't have to watch most of the post George Mark scene ones, but but Living in Harmony and uh, the girl who was death were at least fun. Where I yeah, think, yeah, like, yeah. Do not like, forsake me, oh my darling. Were not was not very fun. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we're gonna give that. That is the lowest rated one when you when you went over the ratings, I believe. So um, yeah, that, I feel like for me of of the I guess the first run production run, I guess I guess Chimes of Big Ben kind of does stick out as kind of the most blah one. I like, most of the things that episode are done better in other episodes. Yeah, I could. Uh... I could co-sign that because I'm, I'm of course looking at the episodes in the wrong order, and I don't know why I'm doing that. <laughs> Could be the right order, you don't know. <laughs> do, do 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 the prisoner. Do 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 do. I don't know why I do this when I look things up on a podcast. Well, because you want to give it like a musical interlude. That makes sense. Do, do, do. I am yeah. incredibly neurotic and can't stop talking or making noise. You can uh, just kind of okay. chill out for a while and you know listen to the music. <laughs> oh god what's our stupid order okay any order right i don't um, think the order matters you're just telling me if anything looks like it didn't work so sure. well for you man you i might have that. liked that better than do i like that better than the general i don't know oh i definitely like general better <laughs> yeah because that that middle I think uh, maybe maybe Hammer into Anvil was my least favorite of the earlier ones. Oh no, I like that one. Okay, so no, no, <laughs> that's was... cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, maybe Chimes of Big Ben. One of the things that got me was just the ending barely made. No, no. The when was there the call that just didn't make any sense? Was that the general? That was Dance of the Dead, I think. Oh, Dance. Oh, maybe that's my least. Was favorite. that you're talking about when there was like the fax machine that was just printing stuff out? Yeah, and, and that and we never figured out what that was supposed to mean, and I still don't know what that was supposed to mean. Yeah, I mean that's that was um that was kind of nonsensical, but there was a fun number two. I maybe Chimes of Big Ben like doesn't work for me quite as well because um Happily Ever After is such a better episode. No, no many happy after excuse me, oh, many, yeah. happy <laughs> many happy returns. returns. Yes, yeah, so I would returns. agree that many happy happy returns is definitely better than Chimes of Big Ben if we're going talking about London episodes. Yeah. I think okay. many happy returns probably the best out of the five episodes where he gets to L goes to London. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like who's a prisoner? You get, uh, we, uh, unless we go with London as its own prison. So we know that in many happy returns that Lon that the village is somewhere like Morocco, and then in no, Fallout we, the village but, is right next to London. But we right? did we did bring up the idea that that jet pilot could have just flown way out to sea and flown right back. Which apparently is what happened, unless it's a fever dream, mm. as you said. It's possible. I mean, <laughs> anything, if, you if, know. If, if we take the ending as literal, that means that the jet pilot kind of took him for a roundabout, right? Took him for a ride. Yeah. Uh, we could, I mean, we could surmise that uh, Many Happy Returns was the fever dream and this was real. Like, that's <laughs> definitely possible. We just this, because we this weren't one shown feels more the, fever dream though. <laughs> just because we were yeah, this one where everyone's like ah, just like screaming at things at each other. Yeah. I mean, this but, is the most psychedelic episode by far, I think. I think this is a little uh that's a tough one because I think once upon a time it's I think once also upon a time very was, trippy, but this one wide screens it where once upon a time mm -hmm. is kind of laser i mean it's basically well reactors right so we we have an ensemble cast of like 50 people all doing weird stuff so that <laughs> automatically makes it trippier right like yeah. i mean i think that once upon a time was more of like a laser focused trippiness right. but this is this is definitely it's more trippy partly because of the the amount of people we have and partly because there's more nonsensical stuff happening. There's more things that just don't mean like we know what why things happen in Once Upon a Time, except for maybe when number two dies. We don't entirely know why that happens. So in it your, doesn't really matter. In your fever dream version of this episode, what actually happens at the end of Once Upon a Time? 
um, he basically falls catatonic and <laughs> they just strap into a chair and he's just in a chair. Okay. The whole time. <laughs> That's basically he's in a coma or something. Is it a they're chair just that... going to keep trying to maybe, you know, this is the thing is that it might be, it's still ambiguous. Even if you look at it that way, because it might be like, they're still controlling things or it might be that he's just gone and they mm. can't get the information they need out of him. In which case, Degree Absolute was still a failure. Yes. Point being, Degree it, Absolute is not really a good method, and you pro- and, and the bosses were right about you probably shouldn't do that. Yeah, I think it was definitely a mistake. <laughs> so um, for all you out there, if you're thinking about doing Degree Absolute, don't do Degree Absolute. Yeah, don't talk to your doctor before doing Degree Absolute. Yes, that's good advice. <laughs> <laughs> If you're if you're taking antihistamines, <laughs> degree absolute is not for you. Side effects may include death. <laughs> yes, it, r- ranting, going. What what was it? Not ping. What do you boop, bop, uh, bop, 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 bop? Forgetting inability to count to six. Side effects <laughs> may include dem bones. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So oh, man. Okay, we are an anti-degree absolute um, podcast. I think that's our stance. Yes, that's the name of the podcast now. That's the subtitle <laughs> of the podcast. Uh, no, it's, it's you know, it is ambiguous, though. Like, even if I say I interpret it like that, I I think it's great that it's ambiguous. I love that um, we don't really know what num- what or who number one is. We don't really know what the game is. It, Was it you saying he'd recently watched Eyes Wide Shut? Yes. I mean, the the whole thing, putting him in the this chair and like, we have to do all the ceremony. I mean, that kind of feels a little bit like the Illuminati party, right? In a yeah, way. Yeah. Is... I've heard, I, I don't know enough about like Masonic initiation, um, uh, you know, procedures, but I've heard that being referred to in terms of this episode. You would have to assume there's some overlap between like Masonic or Illuminati stuff and like espionage like that oh yeah to, for sure yeah you for know sure. that it has to i mean it's all cold war i mean i guess masonic stuff goes back before the cold war but the cold war feels like <clears throat> that kind of thing would thrive like secret well yeah the whole you know i mean crowley was doing uh was doing sort of like spy stuff he might that might have been his main thing you know we, we're not we're not sure <laughs> Yeah, I think he was just kind of a jackass who was messing with people, but I, I still, you never really know, right? Well, he's <laughs> definitely doing, that. he was definitely at different points doing something for, you know, British intelligence. Mm-hmm. May, maybe double crossing with German intelligence. That that could be true too, because maybe it was just, I mean, you know, a spy can play many sides and still just be a uh, a prick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's like, who do you want for a spy? A liar. What's a yeah. liar going to do? That's it sort also, of like, you know, you bang that that guy's girlfriend at the party. What's going to happen? <laughs> She's going to uh, be, be your girlfriend forever. Yeah, and Maybe. and my my favorite is the supposed magical war that took place during World War II with a uh, Hess. You've heard about that? Oh, oh yeah, I know a little about that. <laughs> I think you know up, a lot more about. Yeah, where Hess ends up taking a plane across the channel to try and talk to the Queen and. Jackson, he's like wearing like a magical coat or something, <laughs> like a coat covered in like magical yeah. symbols, and and then he instantly gets arrested and like inter- supposedly interrogated by Crowley. So <laughs> <laughs> he did not get to meet the Queen. <laughs> that is that is pretty interesting. I mean, yeah, there's I mean, there's like a magical. I mean, that's prisoner like... stuff right there, isn't it? Dude, Jacks have a plane yeah. in Scotland wearing a magical coat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's overlap between like Crowley stuff and Scientology, and I definitely feel like there's overlap with Scientology in this stuff. Like there oh, is yeah, yeah. some Scientology. This is going where he got the idea for Scientology. That, and... <laughs> I mean, dude, no. I don't remember when the founding of I don't know no, when I, Bionetics was. I think it was the fifties. <laughs> yeah, I think it happened before this, but still, it's just like I think that this was probably when Scientology was taken sort of seriously before the um Crowley told um uh Jack Parsons like I don't trust that 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 Scientology fellow you should probably stay away from him and I mean didn't Hubbard like steal a ton of money from Jack Parsons yeah 
<laughs> <laughs> and then Parsons blew himself up in the jet propulsion lab. Yeah, it was like, there you go. That's the plot of the prisoner, basically. Exactly. These are episodes of the prisoner. That's why <laughs> that's why the show works so well. You know, truth is stranger yeah. than fiction, but the prisoner makes a run for it. <laughs> yeah. I I do wonder how much Patrick McGoon was like aware of any of the shit we just talked about, but yeah, still. it seems Markstein was, if McGoon wasn't. Because <laughs> mm. Markstein def- seemed to know more of the kind of like, you know, spy stuff. The and then yeah, but what what you know, uh Get well, we have Ian yeah, Fleming definitely was in those circles, you know. There was a, yeah. He, was it was he one of the Brits sent to America to kind of rile things up? I think he might have been. I don't know. I think I do believe that he hung out with, with like Hubbard and Jack Parsons. I don't know about like any and Hitler as far as I don't know as any any it's official libel. capacity. It's libel, <laughs> uh, slander. No, it's I don't slander. know. That's Who knows? Slander, Everyone, libel. Uh, it's libel. It's libel. Okay. Slibel. Slibel. I convict you of slibel. <laughs> <laughs> Unmutual. Uh, <laughs> someone had to. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, whatever. <laughs> I mean, Hitler tried a bunch of magical shit, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, um, Did, you know, I, I, usually, I usually end these episodes and get to what was the mind game in this episode, but I guess this one. This episode That's is part the mind of. Game. That's part of why I don't think this is one of the better the best it's good it's a really good episode i just don't think it's one of the best episodes because it's like there isn't a mind game it just is a thing that goes it just kind of proceeds in a linear fashion from the beginning to the end i don't know just the preponderance of weird psychedelia and james bond stuff endears me so because i mean we get a fair amount of james not this is the one we get the most james bond stuff and he's like this is what you want here it is he's screaming (laughs) that at you of course but like when it's also psychedelic (laughs) it keeps screaming like evacuate evacuate and you just see like fast motion like vignettes of everyone leaving the village and it looks like the end of space balls basically like it seems like that part is a total just all joke. those helicopters yeah yeah like it's like the eight helicopters leaving at the same time i mean this is kind of and they could have just driven is... out of the village they didn't have cars i guess they didn't have cars they just had those little those golf carts but they have a it lot of helicopters fun. yeah it was fun but it wasn't interesting <laughs> that stuff you know what i mean okay it was, just... it was for me that's interesting uh, that's because the imagery okay. sticks in your head, you know. I think if there had have been some kind of game or some kind of trick at all, it would have really uh, like made this the best episode. But it it kind of feels like it's just stuff happens and then some more stuff happens. We, I'm, we, I'm, we already talked about the Duffer episodes, if there were any, which I, none of them are too bad. But uh, what what is your? I think we already discussed your favorite, and I said it's your funeral. And I'm I think I'm willing to stand by that. Uh, I, yeah, my favorite is still Once Upon a Time. I, I do love It's Your Funeral. Um, and I love The Girl Who Was Death, even though that's probably a controversial favorite. <laughs> but, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Schizoid Man and Many Happier Turns. Not the General. Yeah. See, I'd put the General. I would put that on the, on the good list. <laughs> In general, yeah, General is okay. I don't, I don't think it was. I think like General, A, B, and C, and Checkmate were kind of like a little bit of the kind of weak links in that early run but they're it's still like, it's fun. like prime simpsons run e- even the ones that aren't quite as good still have like several things you know like the insane chessboard mm-hmm. stuff and checkmate uh you know a b and c has several pretty tripped out sequences at the end you know um, there's basically i don't know how to describe it but anytime something feels sort of like a checklist like that's sort of how this episode felt like it was we were going down and checking some boxes it's uh the the this is a dumb absolutely dumb comparison but it's the first thing that pops into my head but the expendables 2 where okay. most of that is just they the uh the characters in the the movie walk along a path and then stuff happens they're like oh what's that and it's chuck norris and then they're <laughs> like oh what's that and it's like uh <laughs> dolph lundgren or something i don't know it's just like basically the the action stars just kind of show up in order for let's, most of it let's let's pair this up against a few more finales um since because of our age i guess the obvious choices to go with would be you know the Seinfeld. tng 
Seinfeld. Oh. Was gonna, I was gonna. I was gonna say that second. I said TNG first. Oh, okay. <laughs> Seinfeld. Was yeah, TNG. Second. Okay. And then I uh, think Lost, TNG... Battlestar. Those are the other ones. I, and then you can put in the Sopranos if you want. So those are the five that I. I guess I specifically would like to think about. Okay. Um, some of those I didn't watch, but are just I'm just aware of. <laughs> um, I never saw a Sopranos finale. I'm just aware of it. So. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. So I think Seinfeld is like a good way to wrap up the series, but it wasn't fun to watch. Okay. It's basically a they ended Sorry, the show with a clip show. Order. No, they ended it. No, it's fine. They ended it with yeah. a clip show, you know, basically. Basically. <laughs> so yeah. It's, it's not, it's kind of fun that like, oh, these people were terrible all along, which they, that I think that aged better than, than it was at the time. Mm, yeah. Probably. Cause people were like, what we've been watching assholes for seven years. No, <laughs> yeah because basically most of us have grown up i think when i saw that i was like 18 or something that was when it aired and yeah now i've grown up and i understand that people who are like the people in that show are terrible and i want them away from me so and i guess you can draw a path from that to like curb your enthusiasm which i haven't really seen yeah i don't think that's ended yet has it <laughs> no it got rid of it's back okay. yeah they, but but, they go, but i think my point David is now six thousand 66,000. <laughs> um, but the point I was trying to make with Seinfeld is that people our age, the thing is, everyone in high school is as terrible as everyone in Seinfeld. You know what <laughs> so I mean? Like you, when you grow up, yeah, when you grow up, some people become better people and some, some don't. But, you know, the, it's, you can, I, I never thought anything like, oh, those people are terrible when I was in high school because that's how everyone was. Okay. Um, um I, I guess TNG. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Were you gonna make more points about Seinfeld? I'm sorry. I was I was about to say TNG like you did. So Okay, TNG <laughs> like you did. Um yeah, that's kind of a gold standard to me because it's you get kind of a wrap up but also kind of a look into the Well they future, knew they were making but... they they were in a weird place where they you know I mean they wrote that in generations at the same time. The same people wrote both and confused themselves doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's actually much better than generations is. I like generations, I think more than most people too, but yes, I agree. Uh it's interesting as we're recording this, you know, they're they're not quite finished with season three of Picard, which I guess is trying to be like a true wrap up, right? That's apparently completely nuts, right? It's pretty good so far. There's still three episodes to go, so who knows okay. how they'll land in the end. That's that's why we're talking about this. How does the show land in the end? You know, does it stick the mm -hmm. landing? Which uh, the first two seasons of Picard certainly didn't. Discovery's a little spotty on that for sticking the track, you know? Um, I think ambiguous is a good way to end just about anything. And, like, we don't have, I guess, maybe but TNG. TNG already did that. <laughs> TNG yeah. already did that. So now Picard kind of can't, you know? They can't, Nem yeah, they can't Nemesis flash forward to... <laughs> to the to the future of like when Picard is 150 years old and starting to lose his memory or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> me meanwhile, you know, um, you know, Nemesis was kind of like, oh, let's let's end things definitively by hiring a director who doesn't like Star Trek. <laughs> that was that was really bad ending. Yeah, that's... so that's why they're doing the one now, I think. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I've, it's, I've watched it makes that me several sad. times. I'm, I'm a diehard Trek. I've seen Nemesis like six <laughs> times, but yeah. <laughs> I Yeah, it, it makes me kind of sad that like TNG didn't get this. I mean, I, I kind of get well, why, but they, they had the really perfect get... ending, but then they kept going and going. And well, it's now 25 I mean, it, years later, almost yeah. no, 30 years later, almost. Well, the original series, for one thing, the original series, like, obviously was cut down in its prime, barely got any, any actual episodes. So they had a Star lot Trek six to was cover. A yeah, I agree. It was a better ending the generations. Okay. Uh, before we make this a Trek podcast, uh, did you watch any of those 2000s finales? Uh, I spat out Lost, Battlestar, and Soprano as the ones on my mind. No, but I am aware of, at least I know what the Lost finale is, and I don't really entirely know what the Battlestar one is but i probably wouldn't really understand if i did uh Battlestar, for the most part i think at when it came out i was like eh, i don't know I, I i think i was like oh lost will age better i think now it's like am i wrong saying that Battlestar has aged much better in lost now to me the ending of lost sounded 
awful and i don't think that people would like that kind of thing better now than they did then i think that... lost lost like the prisoner is pretty de- dependent on its finale whereas Battlestar, mm-hmm. you know in the end well, it's going to be a ripper in space battle right <laughs> well this is the thing is the prisoner feels like this guy who who masterminded this whole thing that was already kind of based on him being burned out doing spy stuff and it's really just about him just being trapped forever and maybe or maybe not and uh the thing about lost is that all these people who were just just absolutely like slobbered over for doing like what people loved so much did all these threads that they couldn't like make they couldn't pick up all the threads they kept laying down Mm. and it almost felt like that their commentary was like i just wish i was dead that's what the ending of lost sounds like is like i just want to go to sleep and die (laughs) Like that's yeah. what it sounds like to me, and that's to me is not very interesting at all. Yeah, it, it's sputtered. I, I really love Lost, and I it's, I still like Lost, but they they sputtered their ending a little bit. Battlestar, I basically have a rewrite for the last thirty minutes of their three hour finale. Like uh-huh. I would like things to play a little differently for the last thirty minutes. Otherwise, I actually like that finale because the first two and a half hours it just absolutely delivers. And then the end, I'm like, they make a couple weird choices. And my choices actually would have been more hardcore. It's kind of like, I think they were like not willing to kill beloved characters, even though it was the last episode and they could have. <laughs> well, the the, uh, the J.J. Abrams series I did watch all of was Fringe. You Have you seen all of that? I've seen all of Fringe and I kind of forgotten the finale. So I guess it wasn't See, that great. It, it was, it wasn't that, it wasn't bad <laughs> but the problem was that the series had become so bad before the finale happened because See, all, all i remember is oh they went into the future and that's well, i don't remember what, what happens after that they kept thinking they were going to get canceled so like the 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 end that they wrote for the third season was already bad which is that the the one guy i can't remember his name walter was david or something no kid? was that his name joshua david jackson joshua jackson gets inside the 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 machine and he just disappears and then you see the overseer guys and they're like he was never really here at all (laughs) no it was just like that that's like kind of fun i guess to be like just end it with like he's just like i um okay let's yeah let's talk about things that i actually have seen and give a shit about uh more that's what i was trying to do okay Okay. you know those those are mine yeah i I saw that when i was four years old and was probably just like He's it's Mork, yay. It, it was upsetting to me as a kid because they're like just trapped in time with like that maniac chasing them, and that's just it. Alf? And it was kind of awesome. No, no, it was that guy. It was the guy with glasses. No, no, I'm giving you another disturbing series oh. ending. Alf. Yeah, I thought it was great. I thought it when that came out, I was like, this is wow, this is nuts. Because <laughs> what is it? Alf finally they... gets abducted by the military, and that's the end. Yeah. What a great ending. <laughs> what a great ending that was. I mean, the movie that they made to tie it up was still fun. I don't think that was like a bad, that wasn't like, that wasn't as interesting, but it was still fine. Um, yeah, don't tie that Mindy, knot. <laughs> but still, the Mork and Mindy ending is like ambiguous and sad and kind of like gut wrenching. And it's kind of, a lot of that series was kind of sad and upsetting. And that's kind of, was kind of great. Because... I mean, this, this end with Fallout's basically just like cyclical, right? Like, I suppose so. Or back to him like that. peeling ass on asphalt with Thundercrack, and that's how, that's how the series starts. Do you think that it's possible that Magoon just thought maybe somebody would just be like, actually do have a go at a second season? Um, you think he thought not, that? It's probably worth keeping that in your back pocket, sure. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, it works either, or you could just watch the season, watch the one season over and over again. Yeah. Um, okay, Quantum any, Leap. Oh, yeah, Dr. Samuel Beckett never returned home. <laughs> misspelled yeah <laughs> um again i still again that was that ending was nonsense but it was still it's an ending like, it's a choice it's an it ending and out. it's like it makes you think like oh man it kind of like hits you in the gut it hits you in the gut in so much of a better way than just everyone's dead or in hell or in heaven or whatever the hell the lost was Here, here's the thing i don't think i've ever seen the quantum leap finale but i know the ending <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, well, so, that's how it is you. for Lost because I didn't. I only lasted like three episodes and I got bored. Okay, so uh, 
Yeah, well, it was really I, I, for me. I would tell you, oh, you got to get to the Dharma Initiative, but you just got the better version of the Dharma Initiative by watching The Prisoner. So I guess you really I, don't need to watch Lost Out. <laughs> my my friend John, who you met in the in the arena of game shows, definitely he's been watching The Prisoner along with us, and I'm sure he's listening to this. Hi, uh, he was talking about how now he's like completely like convinced that Lost stole everything from The Prisoner and is in fact not good. I'm like, well, probably. <laughs> Sure. As a yes. big Lost fan of days past, who has, I have the whole show on disc, and eh, he's probably right. <laughs> well, I definitely have those feelings about J.J. Abrams in general, because after watching his, like, Into Darkness and Rise of Skywalker stuff that he did. I mean, I guess that's the thing. This episode in this series still feels, pre- I mean, it's got anachronisms, but it still feels pretty forward thinking. It doesn't overreach. That's the problem with the J.J. Abrams stuff is that it is constantly just overreaching and over dramatizing. I this think is... I would actually, um, I, I, you know, J.J. is responsible for war crimes having directed The Rise of Skywalker. But I feel like Damon Lindoff, the, the, the real showrunner for Lost, is probably mm-hmm. more the overreach guy. Well, yeah. Didn't he write um, Into Darkness, I think? And, um, he... Right. Prometheus. A, a right movie for me this is just, puzzle boxes speaking of overreach let's do this stupid idiot movie about the origin of all life it's yeah i mean oh, whatever movie. i enjoyed it i didn't hate it it's a christmas movie it's dumb yes it is a christmas <laughs> movie definitely the the nakatomi building was uh it's a really good looking christmas movie i will give for i think yeah. i said that when i did a podcast about prometheus it is one of the best looking sci-fis ever best ship one one of the best ships it looks so good but yeah you there's dumb things in that movie it's much better than um alien think, covenant okay yeah in every way yeah yeah i'll go with that oh it's got vision <laughs> right <laughs> it has vision it's just it's, it's that's where i maybe dave and yeah. lindoff vision is well, a little bit foggy yeah it's well it's the vision is the problem it's not like like if it if they just tried to keep it a smaller scale it's just like you can't do things like Oh, it's the origin of all life, and then have it just stupid things happen in your film. It could just yeah. be if you start small, like yeah. one of the characters says in the film, but it doesn't start small. It just goes for huge stuff. Anyway, I have finished, I guess, with the finales I really wanted to put out there. Um, were there any others you wanted to bring into contention? Mm. Well, uh, we got Morgan. Okay, Mindy, I didn't Alf, see the Quantum Leap, TNG. We did talk about Sopranos. Okay, I mean, I, I it, like the idea of the Sopranos ending. I haven't really watched that show. That's exactly me. <laughs> I like the idea, so, but I never watched it. So, um, lost. I wouldn't Star. have been mad. I wouldn't have been mad at it. Um, I mean, there is uh, like along Fallout. the lines of the Sopranos. Uh, Oz had a very good finale in season four, and then they kept going and did two more seasons, which weren't quite as good but yeah there's a few other shows that have had that happen i think super i mean i don't know supernatural is ever good but uh maybe it Mm -hmm. was i'm I'm saying that i don't know i've never watched it but i know it went on several seasons past where it was supposed to (laughs) well after i watched fringe i vowed to just never hate watch anything again ever again just decided babylon 5 had a surprise season after they thought they'd finish their arc but breaking bad watched it you haven't seen Breaking Bad yet. The <laughs> ending of Breaking right Bad. Right <laughs> <laughs> the ending of Breaking Bad. Actually, this the ending of The Prisoner does kind of remind me of that because it does turn into that show does turn into like kind of a parody of itself, but in like a really fun and like insane way. <laughs> Specifically in the last season, but in the last episode, it really does turn into like. A okay. bunch of like drug people shooting each other, which I you did do, watch the first the season, but that was like five years ago. <laughs> yeah, from so. from watching the beginning of the show, even though it does get crazy right away, you would not believe where it goes by the end. You would absolutely not. Because now so, that now I I have also got to do Bear Call Saul, which that recently had its finale. Yeah. Which how was that received? Yes, that was, I think, uniformly considered to be a better finale, and I agree with that. But it, it's okay. not as fun. It's just like imagine something that's like so crazy and violent that it's like polarizing and people That's kind of living in harmony, I guess, in sixties terms. <laughs> I suppose so. I suppose so. But yeah, um, the, uh, the ending of Breaking Bad was more like Fallout and the ending of Better Call Saul is more like a classy and good ending. But you also have to remember that the ending of Better Call Saul is working against the expectations of Breaking Bad and they're not 
it's the same people making the show and they don't want to do the same thing twice same elsewhere you know that ending even though you maybe never watched it which i haven't was that like everyone turned it uh, turned out they were sands in the hourglass of uh, no yeah uh close a pen no, metal they, patient no, no they uh at the hospital's in a um in like a snow globe and then yeah. it's all an autistic boys um yeah like thoughts or whatever yeah. new heart uh you know what maybe new oh Heart's no the best you know what ever. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> or a uh, spoiler for a 30 year old sitcom that he wakes up in bed with his former sitcom wife. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's, that's, yeah, that's so well executed because the second New Heart series depends so much on like insanity and dream logic. It would, yeah. it would be like, if this series ended up with Danger Man waking up and being like, I had a crazy dream, it would, it would at least make sense. Especially you know? if he's in bed with Suzanne Plachette. Yeah. Who, <laughs> was... who man, it was, what was, she would have been like 20 at this time. You know, Yee Hulk. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, no, anyway. but no no love stories for Patrick McGowan, though. He That's right. Know. Well, it would have been that guy from Do Not Forsake Me, Oh My Darling. Yes. Yeah, so you, you just wake up next to Leo McKern. Like, <laughs> I don't think I had to. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great ending. Anyway, New Heart, not my favorite show. Great show, but not my favorite. Yeah. Uh, we mentioned MASH. MASH finale is pretty epic, but I'm, you know, mm -hmm. it's great, but it's, they just leave, you know, that's how it ends. I mean, Cheers finale is leave. pretty solid. Yeah. So, okay. I've been prefacing, like, let, let's, let's go for the best two and where does Fallout rank? I, Man, I guess new. I think New Heart might have just jumped in. I was gonna say all good things from TNG as being the best, but New Heart uh, just is so perfect with that. Yeah, I think New Heart's better, but like, like I named a bunch of really controversial ones that I said I loved. So it's like maybe I, maybe I like this type of ending more than yeah. Than I'm gonna I'm gonna notch this in pretty much right under I think TNG and New Heart because there isn't like like you said so ambiguous. It's not even like there's. I forgot what happened at the end of this, and I've seen it before, but it's, that, I guess that's where I like the execution more than you did. So I like the execution. So it, it's kind of like by the skin of its teeth becomes like a good finale. Well, that's the thing is that even if I say I didn't like the execution all that much, I still like the ending enough that I feel good about the series as a whole and i feel good about the episode as an ending especially if you combine it with my favorite episode once upon a time which you really they go together to. they yeah, yeah you should not you <laughs> would not watch them as as a duo that does help and hey that's the two-part finale for a 17 episode series that's but. true yeah what i mean how how long is all good things is that like like an hour and a half i think yeah it's, it's a two for episode yeah um yeah, no, the um this uh, if you put those two episodes together, that's my favorite episode. Like the Fallout would not drag down once upon a time. Okay, they they need no. each other for sure. So I think we should treat it that way. Um I guess we need to wind this one down. Any any final thoughts? Uh don't get imprisonated. Mm, right. <laughs> so as for this podcast, we're definitely going to do another chat on the prisoner puzzle, which is the interview with Patrick McGowan. The playlist we has has a behind the scenes. So maybe we'll also have a view at that. And um, maybe, I don't know. There's we might do some other stuff. We'll see. So. But, so yes, keep, keep, because... keep this in your RS feed. There's a few more things showing up because it never ends. That's You're the, always that's the point. You're always in prison. OK. Uh, Listener. Can you and you're also number with, one. Lead us out with some some um, crass commercialism. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones, them drones, them drones. I said the drones. The drones. The drones. The Buy drones. Some drones. Dry drones. Okay. <laughs> crass commercialism. Um, I don't know. Send the money to the BBC. They made this cool series. Mm. I was trying to get crass. you to plug us. Do the plug. Oh, okay. Plug. <laughs> How about a crassly plug us? Uh, find us at patreon.com slash podcastio podcastius where you can send money to us monthly. Digitally. You get bonus content. It's really cool. You can hear us like say things wrong and bad even more than on the main feed. Um, check out Films and Filth, the Citizen Kane of podcasting. We're going over 200 movies for most of the rest of our lives. Uh, check out Luke Loves Pokemon, where Luke goes over all the Pokemon. Check out Game Game Show, game show about games. Check out, what is it, the Ocarina of Stuff? 
What is High the Zelda Hyrule, podcast? High Rule Field Report. High Rule Field Report for stuff about about that. Zelda. Mm. Um, check out the Time Enough podcast for Twilight Zone. We're on uh, season three right now. Probably when you hear this, it'll be very close to the end of season three. Nope. Um, no. Okay. It's a long season. Okay. Uh, Occult Disney podcast going over all of the Disney material that's ever with, been released. With more and more weird matchups like the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh with Winnie the Pooh blood and honey. <laughs> yes. Guess which one has more occult stuff in it? I don't know yet. Go we ahead and guess. I, I, I don't I'm know betting. I will bet it. you a hundred thousand fake dollars that <laughs> Disney one has more occult stuff in it. <laughs> it is the occult Disney podcast. <laughs> uh, did I name everything? Did I do good? Uh, I think you got everything. Uh, I mean, I kind of zone out for that. So <laughs> good. Um, good. Because we can't both think about it. Anyway. Uh, fall out. Be, be seeing you. A short ending's good. Should, okay. You should cut after you said fall out before I said be seeing you. No, I'm leaving him be seeing you. That's perfect. All right. <laughs>